Chair, now recognize the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Austin, your written testimony says that the fiscal year 25 budget invests in air and missile defense systems, which will, quote, preserve our ability to deploy combat credible forces when needed, unquote. However, the Missile Defense Agency's budget you delivered to Congress was almost $1 billion below fiscal year 24 budget projections. It canceled, cut, or delayed several munitions programs. In fact, the day after I protested these cuts recently to the director of the Missile Defense Agency, Iran la launched a direct and massive attack on Israel that included over 100 ballistic missiles, 30 cruise missiles, and 150 attack drones. Yet we have limited stocks and we have allies and friends who are desperate for us to give them some of our limited stocks. So why did the department choose these drastic cuts to missile defense at a time when we need it more than ever to protect our homeland and our allies and partners. Well, thank you, sir. As we stated, as I stated earlier, uh, because of the FRA, uh, we did have to make uh, some choices, and they were always tough choices. Uh, and we recognize that uh, that that uh, we needed to invest in uh, current uh, current readiness, and we put a 147 billion dollar request on the table to do that. Uh, and uh, going forward. Uh, we will uh, invest in those things that we weren't able to invest in in this budget uh, if we get support for an increased top line in the out years. So. Okay, uh, the chairman asked you both specifically to give an example of something that's been deferred, and I've got one here I'd like to refer to. Uh, the budget you've submitted also delays the glide phase interceptor. This would be a defense against hypersonic weapons until after 2035. That's uh, 11 years from now. And yet they have this capability today, Russia and China both, especially China. So how is this meeting the threat of hypersonics when we have this threat staring at us today, to, to put it off till 2035? Yeah, again, for those uh, capabilities, that uh, those investments that, that wouldn't deliver capabilities until after 2030, uh, for this current uh, budget, we decided to uh, to not invest in that, but uh, invest in that in later years. So. Well, um, thank you for clarifying that, but I'm thinking we need to re-examine. Sure there's, sure, there's a lot of priorities here, but this is one we've got to re-examine. Um, also, changing gears to nuclear deterrence, when the Biden administration came into office, one of its first acts was to offer an unconditional five-year extension on the New START Treaty. I believe this was a short-sighted gift to Vladimir Putin. According to the State Department, Russia is now in its second consecutive year of violating the New START Treaty. And last year, the Strategic Posture Commission, a bipartisan uh, committee composed of great experts, published its report that described the current nuclear modernization program of record as being necessary but insufficient, given China's breathtaking increase in nuclear capability. Uh, General Brown, I'll ask you this one. So neither Russia or China are appearing at all interested in coming to the negotiating table, and yet we now have the growth of a third nuclear superpower in, the, in this world. So a new tr START treaty is probably going to expire in three years without being renewed by the Russia and the U.S. What should we be doing to prevent prepare for that eventuality? Right, thanks for the question. And, and what I would say is uh, what we need to do is not only thinking about the treaty, and I realize that will be uh, policymakers, but from my perspective as a, uh, as a chairman, as a warfighter, is making sure we are getting capability um, in, in our nuclear portfolio, but also a conventional uh, portfolio. I sat down with the, the Strategic Posture uh, Commission. We talked not only about our nuclear portfolio, but also our conventional capabilities as well. And what's really important to be able to do that is to uh, have uh, consistent funding, uh, consistent demand signal um, to uh, provide uh, that, that capability as we work with our defense industrial base. And those are the things uh, we'll, we'll need to do. As the Secretary highlighted, we're, right now we're focused on readiness based on the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Uh, but as we look uh, to the out years, we do need to focus on not only uh, get, you know, identifying the capability, but giving it consistent funding and then being able to accelerate that capability into the hands of our, our warfighters. Okay, well, th well, thank you both. Uh, we are addressing some of the immediate needs right now, I believe, in a good way, but we really need to look at these out years for what's going to be coming down uh, later. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank the gentleman. Chairman, I recognize.